I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we're on the FM3, and I want to show you some alternative ways to achieve classic effects. This is going to be really useful if you're already using an effect block for some other effect type, and you want to add something that you thought maybe only that block could contribute to your preset. These also work great as CPU saving devices as well. Before we get started though, I've got this Les Paul Custom with P90s plugged into the FM3. You are hearing the direct output of the FM3 being recorded into Pro Tools with absolutely no post-processing. I've got the ODS100 Clean amp model and the 4x12 Rumble Dynacab. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Let's get started by talking about boosts. It's really common to use a drive pedal in the real world or in the fractal as a boost where you turn the drive all the way down and you use the level control to hit the front end of the amp harder. For example, let's go to the drive block and add a T808 style drive in here. I've just turned the level up a little bit and the drive down. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Classic way to use a Tube Screamer style drive. You could see in there it added about 8% CPU usage and different effect types in different blocks are going to add different amounts of CPU in there. Also, it's also just using up another block in there. We could achieve that same effect in the amp block itself. If we navigate to the preamp tab and go to the input boost, you can see I've selected the boost type to be T808. If I just switch this on and then play with the boost level, it's doing exactly the same thing that that drive block was doing. The idea here is that that boost type has the drive all the way down to zero and this boost level will let us set the amount of boost on there. <laughs> in there I can set the amount of boost I can play around with different boost types in here and I don't even have to leave the amp block it also frees up CPU and a space on the grid if I wanted to foot switch that I would personally just right click the input boost parameter and assign a control switch to it over here so I could map this to a physical pedal on the FM3 I'd use one of my control switches or if I'm using scenes I can set up control switch per scene switching. If I set them all off, you could say I could go through different scenes and have that boost switch on when I switch to that scene, which is very, very handy. So that's a really fun trick. If you don't want to use a drive block, use the input boost in the amp block. Let's try another one in here, which is very counterintuitive. Let's say you were using a pitch block, say as the virtual capo, or to provide some pitch detune. On the FM3, there is one instance of the pitch block allowable. But let's say you also wanted to use an octave down effect on there. Well, we can actually achieve that using the ring modulator block, and I'll show you how. I actually just did a video over on my channel with eight different ways to use the ring modulator block, which you should check out if you want some more ideas. But this one's super straightforward. We turn the ring mod on, we set the frequency multiplier to 0.5, and we set pitch tracking on. If I've got pitch tracking off, it sounds like this. Next, let's talk about wobbly things. So modulation, I've got a chorus block in here just set to the digital monotype, which I think sounds fantastic, whether you use it in front of the amp or after the amp and cab. <laughs> We saw the CPU usage increase by about five or 6% on there. Now, you can achieve a chorus effect or a flanger effect or a faux doubling effect using a 
delay block because a chorus is just a short delay with modulation and the delay blocks in the FM3 of which there are two have a modulation section. So try this. Let's try the digital mono type. I'll set the delay time to 10 milliseconds. I'll turn the feedback to zero and in the modulation section, set the rate to 0.5 and I can set the depth to taste in here. So let's just have a listen to this. This is gonna create a chorus effect. <laughs> a flanger style effect instead, just try add some feedback to that delay in there. We'll start with positive feedback and I'll let you hear some negative feedback in there. You get a different character either way. <laughs> the reverb block and this is probably the most discussed block in the FM3 from the perspective of CPU usage. It does use more CPU than a lot of other effect types. You have this quality control in here. I personally think like they should have called these like you know A, A plus, A double plus, A triple plus because the economy setting sounds incredible on its own. I think a lot of people see economy and feel like they're missing out on something there. So let's hear the difference between economy and the ultra high quality on here and we'll see the difference in CPU usage. <laughs> increase the CPU usage. I've been listening to this stuff for a long time and I can hear some very subtle differences in there. I don't think it's a simple case of better and worse though. It's almost like they have different characters in there. And even on the Axe FX3 where you can run two ultra high quality reverbs all the time and not break a sweat, I'll often find myself using the economy setting to kind of mimic, you know, old school reverb sounds in there just because it says ultra high on one doesn't mean you have to use ultra high all the time. As always, use your ears and not your eyes. If you do want an alternative to the reverb block, but you still want some absolutely lush ambience, try out the plex verb type in the plex delay block. This is actually one of my favorite reverb types in the entire fractal ecosystem. And you can see it is using 10% less CPU on the FM3 than that ultra high quality studio reverb was. This one sounds beautiful. <laughs> Last one before we go, I'm gonna use this with some distorted guitar for a super wide lead sound on here. You can use different effect types in blocks to do kind of combination effects. So the quad detune type 
in the pitch block actually lets you set up to four detuned voices with delay. So I'm gonna use voice one and two with no detune. I'm gonna pan them hard left and hard right, but I will set up some rhythmic delays on here. So about 500 and 375 milliseconds of delay. Then the other voices in here, I'm just gonna use strictly for detune. So if I turn voice three and voice four down, I've just got a really nice dual delay. <laughs> If I turn the delayed voices off and turn the detuned voices up, this sounds super thick. And then I can have both at the same time, a super wide lead delay and a thickening detune effect. The multi-tap delay is another one in here. What I like to do is set up delay one and two with very short delay times, and then we can apply some chorusing to those delay times. Then delay three and four, again, I've got set up as my rhythmic delays in there. I can even go to the master section, no, the more section over here and turn up the diffusion so that my delays will get smeared out in a reverb-like fashion. I'll turn that down so you can just hear this kind of dual chorus with dual delay. Then I'll turn the diffusion up and it will sound like chorus, delay, and reverb. <laughs> That I love so much about fractal devices is that while they give you just about every effect you could ever dream of, it also gives you the freedom to not use those effects and come up with creative ways to design your own presets. And I could have used a reverb, a delay, and a chorus in there. No reason why it won't run on this. It fits within a single preset plus some, but sometimes it's just nice to be able to press one button on there, turn a multi-delay or a quad detune in the pitch block on and get a super greasy lead scene that sounds like multiple effects. Sometimes the ring modulator Octaver effect I actually like more than the pitch block. It doesn't track as good, but it kind of sounds funky and fun. And the same thing with using different approaches to ambience or modulation in there. So hopefully you find these tips and tricks useful for your FM3 or your FM9 and your Axe FX3. And now I wanna hear from all of you, what are some of your favorite ways to create classic effects, I guess in a non-typical way? Let me know in the comments section below and I will see you all next week for another Tuesday Tone Tip. Take it easy.